Hello everyone and welcome to a little bit of messing around in Realism Overhaul Sandbox. In this episode I'm going to present you an aircraft. I don't often do aircraft these days because the landing gear is so frustrating there isn't much of a selection and it often does bad things and then the runway is bumpy or at least it seems bumpy because the landing gear does weird things and so I've been sort of turned off from aircraft uh, for a while now and well but the thing that's manageable is smaller aircraft the larger you make it the more it tends to have issues in realism overall it's not so bad in stock actually I can make fairly large aircraft in stock without any problems it's in realism overhaul that um, the inaccuracies because you're expanding the the world by a factor of 10 really makes the runway very irritating so yeah uh, given that, I've decided to make a small aircraft, which won't have so much of a landing gear problem. And the goal of this was to create an aircraft that uh, could have been designed in the 1950s, that could take off from a runway, uh, get to space, and then land back on a runway, basically beating out the X-15. And so this is the X-8A. Uh, the core of this is this engine, which is the A-6. It's a development on the V2 engine, which was the A4, and uh, the A7 is actually the Redstone engine. So A6 is uh, burning ethanol and liquid oxygen, as the original A4 did. It provides a little bit more power, but we have that burning for, for one minute. And you can see one minute here. Uh, if all of the kerosene for the jets ran out, its initial thrust weight ratio would be 1.92 and its final thrust weight ratio 4.68. So that is the basic configuration. But uh, the jets are Avon RB146 Mark 302 turbojets, and they were used in the Electric Lightning, the BAC Electric Lightning uh, from England, and it, was, it had its first flight in 1954. Uh, in that uh, aircraft, the, these engines were stacked vertically and here we have sort of a business jet arrangement, sort of like a Learjet kind of idea. But uh, yeah, so those jets were in the 50s. Uh, this obviously, the A6 was in the 50s. So everything here could have been done in the 50s. Um, the, in fact, I, I made sure that the RCS pods use HTP. And uh, we have a HTP tank here. I mean, it's actually not taking up much of the space of this because it wouldn't be reasonable to have this space filled up with HTP, uh, given that the jet is there. But you can imagine a small little pack of HTP in there somewhere. And there's an HTP hold here as well. We actually have to shift it uh, for center mass reasons. Uh, as, uh, well, I think I should uh, cover what happens as things get depleted. So. Let's say we use up HTP, ethanol, liquid oxygen, and the kerosene. You can see that the center of mass stays in front of the center of lift, so you don't have to worry about that. But we do want some extra margin, and so the HTP being moved up here moves the center of mass a little bit further. Um, that is because of an effect that you will see. Uh, you can see it's very close if uh, the HTP, all that's left is the HTP back here. Uh, that's high test peroxide, by the way. It was an RCS fuel that was used at, in the 1950s, so that's why I've used it here. And uh, though we've got a fairly efficient high test peroxide, so I don't know if that's fair or not. But yeah, uh, we, we do have a problem with this. And when it comes to these designs in Realism Overhaul Sandbox, I think there's been a pattern, and it's an intentional pattern, that... I come to a point where the design is okay-ish, but I'm having a particular problem with it. So you'll see that pattern a lot, and uh, that'll be true going forward as well. Uh, so here we are. I'm going to fill her up, and we'll take it out and see how it works. And now, because the center mass is fairly far forward right now, it actually takes a little bit of time to get off the runway. It'd be better if it was closer to the center of lift, um, but based on the way it moves around, we can't move the center of lift forward to meet up with it. And of course, the fact that this tank depletes and is so heavy, you know, here, here the total mass is 19 tons. This tank itself is 10 tons and the fuel itself is uh, more than 9 tons. So the center of mass will move, or, I mean, it's sort of center to the center mass. The attempt was 
to make sure that the center mass is right in the middle of it, but uh, it is obviously a little bit tricky. So here we are. Incidentally, you might notice this little bit here and that little bit there and that little bit there. there. Well, that's because uh, the part that I used had those little fin pieces on the engine uh, because the Redstone rocket had fins, right? So, well, they just came along. That's from the facet pack, by the way. Okay, so here we go. So we've got Jeb in the cockpit. Everything is looking fine. And throttle up, SAS is on, and ignition. Okay, see, those, those are little sort of bumps in the runway I'm talking about, if you're wondering what I'm talking about. Yeah, oh, and this got us skidding now. Uh, Alright, well, let's try and take off here quickly. Yeah, come on, up, 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 up. Alright. Yeah, so obviously that's why I don't do planes. I don't know what causes that. It's certainly not a fun sort of situation. So if you know of any fix for that, I'd be glad to hear it. It makes things a lot difficult. I've been working on a Concorde as well, but that uh, gets off the ground maybe once every eight tries because of all the nonsense with the landing gear and the bumps. It can't really go past Mach on these engines, unless it's already going past Mach, of course. SAS tends to have this sort of uh, oscillation going on with the controls. Don't tell me to tune back the controls. We need them as they are, otherwise it's going to have trouble later on. But yeah, SAS tends to make them wobble a bit. In the pitch, uh, only the outside ones here, the ailerons, are uh, tuned for roll. Mainly it's a pitch oscillation. So I've done something like this before in my old EDB Aerospace series, but uh, that one used an RL-10 for the core engine and that had multiple ignitions, which makes it a lot easier because then you can cut your velocity coming down. In this case, we're going to be coming down very fast. So that makes things a lot, dif uh, a lot different. And we could do this uh, a lot more efficiently, but I'm just going to spike up here and then start the rocket. I'm going to call it satisfactory as long as we pass um, 100 kilometers. Okay, so we are going up. I'll switch off the jets once uh, they start overheating. Okay, off they go. Just a rocket now, 20 more seconds is all. Two, one, and it's off. 133 kilometers. Now, by real solar system definitions, this obviously wouldn't be the official line of space, but this certainly satisfies all the record keeping, uh, which is set at 100 kilometers, so I think we can call that okay. Now, as I said before, I pump up the HTP. So this is fairly simple, actually. Um, you got a cockpit that is a procedural structural part, procedural structure part, um, Procedural tank, procedural tank, uh, B9 procedural wings, uh, stock landing gear. The RCS pods are from KW Rocketry and obviously configured for realism overhaul. Uh, these air brakes, I don't remember which, which mod adds those particular ones. Uh, obviously procedural tank, A AJE turns something or another into that turbojet, stock air intake. 
and of course FASA for the rocket and more B9 procedural wings and that's what we've got once we start going down we'll use the RCS to make sure our orientation is correct we're really really high now so basically we want to put as much of a flat surface against the airflow as possible which means uh, we are going to turn level and point retrograde so point back west and then be flat so that uh, the air is just hitting our wing flat which will produce the maximum amount of drag at a certain point uh, close to 50 kilometers it's just gonna force this plane to nose down there's no avoiding that and uh, then we hope that things go don't go too awry but previous test flights the problem has been that it wants to nose up now that's peculiar because we saw that the center of mass and uh, center of lift were proper even when the tanks were empty so why does it want to nose up is the question we technically have some fuel left over for the jets just in case as it forces us to nose down it is critical to pull up as hard as possible so uh, okay well it's doing it a little bit earlier than I thought it would so I am uh, maximizing my pitch up this is where the air brakes are really really important because we don't want it to accelerate us downward too much now uh, so the g-forces I mean, nominally speaking, this is where the g-forces would be highest. And I don't know if the pilot would be expected to pull up or whether a computer system would handle this particular maneuver because it'd be hard for the pilot to manipulate the controls or something. But got to pull up so that eventually it points down... Well, we're pretty far out, huh? Points down 200 degrees. Oh, not 200, 20 degrees. Oh, yeah. Wow, we got some distance this time. Okay, uh, well, uh, since we do have distance, we'll take the air brakes in and try and coast a bit. We can light the engines. And we should turn off the RCS. Right now, the engines are providing 27 kilonewtons of thrust and increasing. Oh, let's not overdo it. Okay, let me cut back on the thrust. Make sure I'm in locked view. Okay, descending below Mach 1. Ooh, whoa! That was a tough maneuver. Ooh. Oh boy. It's doing that thing where it wants to pitch up again. Okay, landing gear down. Oh, maybe I just need to put the center of mass for forward, but yeah, it's uh, tending to want to pitch up. It's not as bad as on previous flights, but it's still doing that. That's why I'm uh, pushing down and it's pushing up again, and it's tough. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Oh boy. Ah! Uh oh. We're gonna stall like this. Oh boy. Oh! Uh, it's, 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 it's pitching up on its own. It's very hard to bring it down. Uh, uh, I, I'm not, I can't push it down. And now its stall speed will be less than it was on the way up. Ah! But not that much less. Oh. Oh, 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 <sighs> So, yep, 
I mean, it really wants to pitch up there. Maybe it's because the speed is too high, and I, I'm not really gauging how, how low the stall speed really is. In which case, I really need to get slower in order to do the landing process instead of going at that kind of speed. But, yeah, uh, I'll, I'll take your thoughts on this one, and uh, I'll proceed to do other experiments to see what might be the cause. Alright, so on that note, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did enjoy this video, please do press like. If you have any comments or suggestions, please leave them in the comment section below, and I'll see you next time.